This man's kidneys were failing a week after he returned from a cruise through Central America. This is how his sex life nearly killed him and how you can avoid this. SP is a 43-year-old male coming to the emergency room with one week of fever, headaches, and vomiting. The patient's husband is at the bedside with him and is very concerned. He says that they've tried naproxen for headaches and Zofran for his nausea and vomiting, but nothing seems to help. The medical staff recognize that SP is in rough shape. His blood pressure at 90 over 56, heart rate of 135, and a fever of 103 degrees Fahrenheit. With vital signs like this, septic shock is a very real possibility. They quickly send off a panel of blood work, which shows a GFR of 20, indicating severe kidney damage. He has started on large doses of IV fluids to improve his blood pressure and provide better blood flow to the kidneys. But after several liters of fluids, his kidney function only slightly improves, and the doctors are scratching their heads as to what could be going on. They obtain a history from SP and his husband, and they learn that they were recently on a cruise through Central America. Immediately, the list of potential diagnoses grow. Now they must consider some more rare forms of infectious diseases, like dengue fever, malaria, or leptospirosis. They also learn that SP has a history of HIV, hypertension, irritable bowel syndrome, and migraines. They wonder if his presentation today could be related to his underlying medical issues, or could something more sinister be going on? You see, SP was diagnosed with HIV about three years ago, and after a lot of initial shame and depression, he had finally grown more comfortable in his own skin. His viral load was undetectable and he took his retroviral medication regularly. His husband was very supportive and was actually the one to plan this special cruise through Central America. It was a celebration of how far they've come and how SP could live with his diagnosis and not run from it. Undetectable HIV means it's untransmittable, meaning that there is virtually 0% chance of giving the virus to somebody else. Knowing this, the couple felt confident to have sex with each other and with other people with protection. And so during their first excursion from their cruise in Central America, it was time to have some fun with the locals. After a night of dancing and drinks, the couple go back to another man's house for a fiesta of their own. The next morning, SP and his husband board the cruise ship and finish their fabulous trip together. They had no idea what was going to happen over the next several days. Our story picks back up in the hospital where the IV fluids aren't really helping. Ultrasound of the kidneys was normal and the remainder of blood work was reassuring. His temperature continues to run high at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. The medical team commenced their extensive testing for a fever of unknown origin. This included more blood work than either of them was ever expecting. Tests for hepatitis A, B, C, and E were all negative. So was testing for leptospirosis, a travel-related illness. And slowly, each test, cryptococcus, fungal PCR, rickettsia, Q fever, parvovirus, EBV, mycoplasma, arbovirus, strongyloides, and toxoplasma return negative. A full body CT and an MRI of the brain come back and the results are normal. The next step in this workup is to perform a lumbar puncture. This is where a needle is placed between the vertebra in your low back to collect a sample of fluid that surrounds your spinal cord. This can be sent to the lab to test for infection. The lumbar puncture was unsuccessful as they weren't able to obtain any fluid. This can be a pretty painful procedure and SP doesn't want to try it again. SP was started on an IV antibiotic called cefuroxime and admitted to the hospital for further monitoring. The next day, fevers, headaches, and vomiting continue. There is no improvement in his symptoms when the medical team realizes that things just aren't adding up. They even put RuPaul on his TV and not even that could remedy the issue. Things are getting serious. The time has come you to lip sync for your life. Finally, they add on some testing for syphilis and it comes back positive. To their shock, nobody asked the patient about his recent sexual history. And upon learning about his recent sexual encounter, things started to make sense. SP has started on long-acting penicillin, the treatment of choice for syphilis infections. And after nine days of treatment, his symptoms gradually improve. His kidney function returns to normal after treatment and SP makes a full recovery. Syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea, they're no joke. 
with PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV, a lot of people are now disregarding these bacterial STDs. Now, there is a strategy that SP could have used to prevent from getting this STD to start with, which leads me to ask you, have you heard of doxypep? Let's break this down. Doxy stands for doxycycline, which is an antibiotic. PEP, P-E-P, -E is post-exposure prophylaxis. Post-exposure means after your exposure, after sex. Prophylaxis means something you take to prevent disease, like an antibiotic. So doxypep is an antibiotic that you take shortly after sex to reduce your risk of getting gonorrhea, chlamydia, or syphilis. Think of it like the plan B for an STD. Here is the deal. If you're a dude and you've had sex with other dudes or a transgender woman, and you've had an STD over the past 12 months, gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, then you should talk to your provider about starting doxypep. But even then, if you haven't had an STD in the past 12 months and you still have some riskier sexual practices, talk to your provider about doxypep. This antibiotic should be taken within 24 hours after sexy time, but can be taken up to 72 hours afterwards. And to think, SP could have avoided all of this blood work, an admission to the hospital, CT scans, MRIs, a needle in his spine, all if he knew about doxypep. Now taking the medication does not stop you from getting an infection 100% of the time. In fact, the studies are showing about a 70% reduction in infection rates. But I should note that taking an antibiotic regularly does increase the risk of a bacteria developing resistance to that antibiotic. After repeated exposure to a certain antibiotic, bacteria can get smarter and develop ways to survive our antibiotics. So don't go grabbing your friend's pills. Talk to a provider first about doxypep. I'm John, I'm a physician assistant. I've been practicing for over two years now. I work in internal medicine. Email me if you have any questions and check the video description below for all sorts of fun tidbits and resources and references. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching and always don't forget to live your lives out loud.